Hey, welcome to another episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. I'm Rob, your host, and we have with us... Sean Fitzsimmons. He's co-hosting tonight. And tonight's episode is not going to be a real long episode. We're just going to talk about... We wanted to kind of talk about our favorite restaurants to go to in the Katy area where we can take our own bottle of wine. And they may charge us a corkage fee, and that's perfectly fine. We're happy to pay a corkage fee, but, you know, wine can be personal. You like what you like, you know, certain types of wine, certain wines from, you know, different regions. And when you can go to a restaurant, eat really good food, but drink the wine that you like to drink, it just makes the experience that much better, in my opinion. Yep, I agree. It's nice. You know, we're recording this as I'm looking at our big, giant wine refrigerators with a couple hundred bottles of wine in them. And it's nice to be able to take those out to places when we want to go have a nice dinner. You know what's sad right now is that we're looking at that big wine refrigerator with all those bottles and we're we're not drinking we're drinking water we're drinking water so we're being good boys sparkling water on a wednesday night so uh well let's get started sean let's talk about our our top places and again no particular order but just our favorite places to go eat and take a bottle of wine yeah so uh you know just first one and like rob said no particular order but just one of my favorite restaurants in general anywhere in the world is da vinci uh we love da vinci for a number of reasons we were probably one of the first customers that ever went in there when we lived just about a mile from da vinci and uh, this was back when alex was the maitre d the chef the waiter and everything and obviously that restaurant's grown up quite a bit over the years but we love it and uh, love a lot of the food there we love the staff with uh, obviously alex and cj and fernando and everybody that works there just is so nice to us and has been great to our family over the years but we love the food and one of the things that Rob and I, I think both discovered here, you know, relatively recently within the last couple of years is that if you have a couple favorite dishes there, you can actually get half orders of each and combine things together and make your own little combo dishes almost, which is great. Yeah, it's awesome. It, it, it gets you to a point where you're comfortable for a while, but then you get greedy again and you go, OK, I can pick two. Now it's, it used to be what one dish do I want? Now I can pick two. It's like what two dishes do I want to combine? Because there's just so many good choices. Yep. So, you know, this some of the restaurants on the list, uh, either I haven't been to or Rob hasn't been to or whatever, but this is one we've both been to. So I'll share a couple of my favorite dishes. Since the first time we ever went there, um, I love their roasted prosciutto, which is basically prosciutto stuffed with mozzarella and basil and then topped with this just delicious balsamic uh, reduction glaze that is outstanding. And then for my main course, pretty much all the time now, um, I get a half and half order of their pappardella seafood pasta, um, which I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I've been saying pappardella for so long that we'll go with that. <laughs> And I do a half order of that, which is really just a bunch of different seafood in it and a cream type sauce that's delicious. And then I do the veal riviera for my other half, which is you can think of a little bit like veal marsala, uh, but topped with some mozzarella cheese, um, a couple of whole shrimp, and then some jumbo lump crab meat. And it is outstanding. And I know Rob's got a similar combo, but. Yeah, same tweaks. seafood pasta. I'm not even going to attempt it because I wouldn't do it any justice at all but i'll call it the loaded seafood pasta with the, what is it papadelli yep yeah, okay and that's one of my it's been a favorite of mine for a long time and that's used to be all i would eat until i figured out that we can combine some dishes but the other one that i like that my wife loves as well is the uh, snapper melonese and it is just fantastic with some crab meat on top of that snapper with whatever that sauce is they put on there with it with some capers it's just really really good um, so that, that's my favorite dish to get. I mean, I'll venture down that board and try some different things once in a while, but if, if that's my go-to. That's, if I have to have one thing there, I'm going to combine those two, and that's my dish for the night. But would you talk about the appetizers? Uh, just the one that I usually get there, the, the roasted prosciutto, but there's tons of other ones. The, Man, the baked pear salad I the, love. The grilled caprese. Yeah, the, um, the soupe de peche is this seafood bisque that they make that is just – I mean, mussels and clams and shrimp and scallops and everything is in there. And that, that bisque is just really, really good. And obviously the desserts, desserts there are just over the top with fireworks, sparklers on them and everything. And his sugar work. I mean, he can yep. work some sugar. He makes, I mean, it's a presentation that just looking at it, it looks so good. It's just, it's just amazing what he does with sugar. Yep. So. Next on our list. Uh, oh, let me say one no, more thing. Ahead. 
if you've been to Da Vinci, you already know everything. I get it. But if you've never been to Da Vinci, make a reservation. Yeah, you, you pretty much any day of the week, you can't get in there without any a reservation. Any day of the week. I just wanted to throw that out there because it's a small restaurant, 12, 13 tables. Yep. So. And Da Vinci's located on Fry Road over by Whole Foods in a little shopping center right uh, next to the Whole Foods complex there. Yeah. So, and again, take your wine. You can take a couple bottles. They'll, they'll treat you right. They'll make sure it gets on ice if you need it to. Um, they'll, they'll cork it and pour it for you. They do a great job of taking care of you. All right. Next on our list is Pene e Vino. stands for Bread and Wine in Italian. Um, a, another great Italian restaurant located on Fry Road um, over by Seven Lakes High School, very close to there. Um, you know, love this for a lot of reasons. Their food is fantastic. Uh, their manager, Roberto, is just a really nice guy. We love going in there and talking to him. Um, they actually have some decent wines there themselves, a, a pretty good wine collection, and they do some wine dinners as well, but it's nice to be able to bring our own bottles. Um, a couple of my favorite foods there are uh, they do an appetizer that's off menu that I really, really enjoy, which is pretty basic Italian appetizer of some grilled uh, Italian sausage sliced up, uh, mixed in with some marinara, some onions and uh, roasted or grilled red peppers. And that's just outstanding. And then they do something pretty unique um, that I've only seen at a couple other places. And that is their Parmesan wheel pasta which is they have a giant Parmesan wheel. I forget how, how much it weighs, but I think those things weigh somewhere around 30 pounds or something like that. Mm, and yeah. they basically take fettuccine pasta and make uh, put it right into that pasta wheel, and all the pasta gets coated up with some fresh Parmesan cheese, and then they finish it off with a couple of great finishing flavors that are just outstanding. And that's done table side. Table side, you yeah, so you get that. a little bit of show. Yeah, it's really cool. And that's that's my wife's favorite dish up there. But I've, ha I've had a few other things, but my favorite, and I don't think it's on the, m the menu, but uh, they'll make it for you if you ask for it, is the Chipino. It is just their seafood soup is so good. I'm looking at their menu. I, yeah, I don't see it on there. So, But I know they have it because, you know, I, I remember the first time I went, um, he asked me, what do you like to eat? And I said, man, I just like all the seafood. And he said he was going to make the chipino for me. And I'll tell you what, I, I wasn't disappointed. It came out really, really good. And and they're a place that typically you can get into, you know, pretty easy. But if yeah. it's a Friday or Saturday, I would su still suggest having a reservation. But during the week, you know, if you, you go, you can, you can probably get in. But they treat you really, really well. They have great food. And uh, you can take your own bottle of wine. Yep. Next up, we've got Essentials Kitchen, and I think this is one of the most understated restaurants in the Katy area. Really super talented chef that loves the, the work that he does. It is a South American, Latin kind of fusion restaurant. Also pulls in, pulls in some of the flavors from the Mediterranean with some of the Spanish dishes and things like that. Um, Essentials is located on 1463 in South Firethorn Road, so it's on the kind of western edge of Katy, which is nice that we've got that kind of restaurant out here now. And Essentials Kitchen is known, I think, number one for their paella, which is just outstanding. Their paella is really, really legit. It's very authentic. My wife, Leanne, spent a couple years as a child in Spain, and so she's loved pa paella and instilled that love in me a long time ago. And the first time I took her there, uh, back probably uh, earlier this year or late last year, she said it's the best paella that she's ever had outside of Spain. Yeah, and their paella is fantastic. I will tell you that it feeds four people. Yep. So if you're going to order it, uh, you know, if it's you and, and your significant other, then, then know you'll have a little take home, and that's not a bad thing. But if it's a group of four of you, by no means think you need to order two of those. Order one, enjoy the paella, but explore the menu. Try some of the other things he has because he has some fantastic things on there that are always fun to order a few things, put it on the table, and let everybody try a little bit. I'm not going to talk too much about it because – John, tell them. Yeah, we're going to do a, a whole episode on Essentials Kitchen coming up here very soon in the next couple of weeks. So we're yeah. excited to do that. So that'll, that'll be the podcast you'll hear after this one right here. I, I will say one last thing with Essentials. Uh, they actually do not charge a corkage fee as of the time that we've recorded this um, in October of 2019. That may change, obviously, down the road. But for now, they're not charging a corkage fee. Obviously, we have no issue paying corkage fees at places, but this is a great way to save uh, even more money. And, you know, you can do a pretty inexpensive date night up there uh, by bringing your own wine and not paying any corkage fee. And you get to drink good wine, wine you yeah. like anyway. That's good wine. If you like it, it's good wine. 
Um, I will say, talking about corkage fees, we don't mind paying them. Typically, at most of the restaurants we're talking about, they're anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks is, is on average what you're going to pay for a corkage fee. And if you think about it, you know, if you're buying at the, the store, your, your favorite bottle of wine is 30 bucks and you pay $10 corkage fee, it's 40 bucks in. A lot of times that $30 bottle of wine, if you bought it from the restaurant, is going to cost you, you know, what, 60, 70 bucks? Sure, at least. So yeah. you're well ahead. So it's definitely, you know, worth paying that corkage fee, in, in my opinion. All right, next up, uh, one I haven't been to. El Cantone. El Canton is located on South Mason. It's just past, uh, what would that be? I guess that's uh, Kingsland. Go about a block past Kingsland going south on your left. It's just kind of tucked away in a little strip center there. It's on the corner so you can kind of see it. Um, but it's a pizza joint that is a fusion of flavors between what you would traditionally have on pizza and Mexican flavors. So you're going to get your chorizo, and you're going to get a lot of peppers, and you're going to get a, a spicier marinara on some of the pizzas that they offer. So if you like Mexican food and you like pizza, and I don't know who doesn't. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great place to go. If you haven't tried El Cantone, you definitely want to get up there and check them out. they got great pizzas. It's wood-fired, so you're going to go in. You're going to see the big oven. They cook it on wood right there in front of you, so it's really cool to see that. They do a great job with kids. They, they allow the kids to, you know, they'll bring them a piece of dough. They'll let them work the dough and make whatever they want, and then they'll cook that for them, which is pretty cool. I like that. Um, and, again, you can take your own bottle of wine. We really enjoy those places. So next up, we've got Duck and Bow, another place that I haven't been, but we are going to get to go this Friday, and I'm super excited. We're going to take a group of people up there and just eat and eat and eat, I think. Yeah, we're going to go enjoy. That's going to be a fun one. Duck and Bow is new to Katie. It's only it, they're, they're still kind of in their soft opening phase, um, and they're going to have their their grand opening in November at some time. And that's going to be a cool thing. If you if you're listening to this, go back and listen to the Duck and Bow podcast that came on before this. You'll get a lot of good information from the owner, the co-owner Darren Wren. Uh, Alex Chin is the other owner. They're partners. Um, he runs the the restaurant. Alex does. He does a great job. Duck and Bow uh, has some significance in the name. They specialize in Peking duck. And Bow, for, for me, and I think most Americans, is a dumpling. So when you think about Bow, it's, it's really that dumpling. But they do a soup dumpling where you actually have <laughs> liquid that you can drink. I'm not kidding, drink. There's enough of it in there uh, in this dumpling. It's really unique. And, and from what they've told me and, and what we've discussed with them, it's uh, something that's not done in a lot of places, but it's very hard to do to get that ratio right, to get that soup in there. So really cool. But they do a lot of other dishes, some really good flavors. Um, they're located on South Mason Road, just uh, past, uh, we have the right at the corner of Marymount, across from, if you know a Tommy, uh, you'll see the Schlotzkys there. They're right behind there in that little strip center at the 510 bar right in that area so check them out they really do a fantastic job with good flavors and great prices and you can take your own wine the next one is staying in the asian flavors pepper twins also new to katie i'm gonna i'm gonna mix kind of two of these together they both have come in very recently um mala and pepper twins pepper twins is located on 99 going south if you're coming south from i-10 it's going to be, you're going to come to Highland Knolls. You're going to exit there, make a loop around, go underneath I, uh, 99, and just back up on your right-hand side, you'll see it, see it sitting right back there as Pepper Twins. It's, I think it's in the same area as Ruthie's Mexican that's been there for ages. So if you've been up and down 99, you've seen Ruthie's. It's right in that area, right by Ruthie's. Uh, Mala is also new. Uh, it's over by Asia Town, and it's also, both of these places have fantastic Asian food, but you can bring your own wine to both of these locations, which is great. All right, next up we got Sapore. Sapore is located on 1093, just a little bit east of 1463 um, in, in a shopping center over there on the north side of 1093. Um, another Italian restaurant that we're lucky to have here in the Katy area. If you're familiar with Papa De Euros, uh, great place in Katy, uh, owned by the same family. And this family happened to spend a lot of time, a number of years living in the Detroit area where I grew up. So it's nice to see them down here cooking some of the things that I remember uh, having 
uh, back up in Detroit. And Sapore has a couple things that I really like. Their chicken marsala um, is just delicious, uh, which is really the, the litmus test for me with most Italian restaurants. I love chicken and veal marsala. And then their spaghetti bolognese is actually really, really good. And who doesn't like a big bowl of spaghetti? Yeah, and Sapore, you know, I haven't been since you're under their, their new ownership. And I need to get back out there. My wife and I have talked about that. So we definitely need to go hit them up and take a bottle of wine. Yep. Yeah. The next one we're going to talk about is Azul Seafood and Tapas. Uh, this is Lucy Chow, who owns Azul, and she does a fantastic job. It's got that kind of Asian uh, sushi kind of feel to it. They do a lot of sushi rolls, and, and there's a. And another thing I like about them is if if you want a particular flavor, if there's something you want to try, just let Chef Edgar know, and he's going to. Uh, or excuse me, Chef Eduardo know. And he's going to put those flavors together for you and create what you're looking for. And they do a really good job of that. But it's not just sushi. They have, you know, seafood tacos with, you know, soft shell crab, shrimp, uh, fish. And they do uh, a Hawaiian fried rice. They do. They have specials with uh, chili yep. and sea bass sometimes, some other bisques and soups. So they're, they're wildflower honey and chipotle calamari. It's so awesome. So it's just delicious. And when you think of calamari, pretty much every restaurant I've ever been to breads it and deep fries it. And theirs is not breaded, so it really lets the calamari come through. And it's a really good, interesting flavor with the honey on there. And then the chipotle, you get a little bit of the sweetness and spiciness. And I think that's a really unique dish. Um, and don't be confused that you think that calamari is going to be tough. You know, a lot of people think if it's not fried, it's not tender. They do a good job. Whatever their process is, they do a really good job of it's tender very good and then they do a just delicious lobster roll they call it the lobster deluxe which has some shrimp tempura some spicy tuna some avocado some blue crab and then obviously some lobster some grilled lobster and various sauces on it so that's just outstanding azul is a, a pretty small place pretty quaint place it's a great place to go on a little date day date night date whatever um, great spot to go hang out and like we said you can take your own bottle of wine there yeah, that's, that's the whole point of this conversation is kind of telling you where we know you can take a bottle of wine and go enjoy some good food. Those, those are kind of our primary places, our favorite places to go. And, and honestly, they're the ones that we know. And, and we don't know all of them, but we're willing to learn. I mean, if you guys know of some places and you want to put it on, uh, you know, food, wine, and whiskey in your own backyard, if you want to put it on Fort Bend Foodies and let people know you know where you can take a bottle of wine where you can go enjoy some good food definitely do that man i'm always looking for somewhere new to try and if i can take wine with me when i go i, I always like that yeah and i'd love to know some places that are outside of katy maybe inside houston proper that we can go to that's a great point as well that is a great point i will tell you you probably saw a little a little uh trend here of you know italian places pizza places and asian places typically they might just have beer and wine and it's places who have beer and wine that can allow you by law to bring in your own bottle and charge you a corking fee. If they sell liquor, uh, they're no longer allowed to let you bring in your own bottle of wine or, or anything like that. So that's why you're kind of seeing that trend here. But if you know of any other places that don't have a liquor license that sell, you know, a steakhouse or anything like that, definitely let us know. Yep. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us on another episode of food, wine and whiskey in your own backyard. Be sure to tune in to our next podcast. Like Sean said, where we're going to cover essentials. That's going to be a great episode. But until then, enjoy your next pour.